friends llms gives good results when we include a few examples of input and output in the prompt which is what we call few shot prompting but there are a few challenges with it the token length speed cost and the distraction now we know each llm has its own limitation on the token length so we cannot provide as many examples as we might have collected right but the latest llms which has a very large token length so we can uh, in fact give uh, uh, many examples but there also we have an issue of distraction right so if the examples we provided are not so relevant to our query the llm might get a distract and might not give the best results in addition to that we have speed and cost considerations also uh, giving more examples mean the llm takes longer time to process so the speed can be slow and also the cost depends not only on the output tokens but also on the input tokens even though uh, the input token cost is slightly less compared to the output tokens right uh, using dynamic few shot prompting uh, we can uh, overcome all these challenges okay so in this method what we simply do is at the time of invoking the llm we select few best or few most relevant examples based on our query and we provide only those few examples uh, to the llm all right let's see how this works uh, with an example so here we have a small movies data set a movie has a title uh, the actors now this can be multiple uh, it is separated by this pipe symbol uh, same for directors and also genre the movie has a rating and the release date uh, along with an id okay so we are going to create a graph database with three types of node the movie person and genre person include both actors and directors okay so you can either use a uh, neo4j desktop uh, this is how your credential look like i am using an online version these are my credentials i just remove the password all right so we can use a neo a 4j graph from langchain community and then we are going over our csv file uh, row by row okay so from each row first we are extracting the movie id from which we create a node of type movie and then we set three attributes the release date the title and the imdb rating okay so with these four lines we have created movie nodes and set uh, these three attributes and then we create the directors so we are going over the director column we are splitting it by the pipe symbol because uh, it can have multiple directors we are creating a node of type person okay and we are creating a relationship directed between the person p and the movie m which we created here okay and we are doing exactly the similar so this time also the node type is person but we are doing it on column actors and we are creating a relationship acted in between person to the movie okay and finally we are taking genre and again split by the uh, pipe symbol and create relationship between movie and genre as in genre okay so three types of node three relationships so if you look at the schema we have movie with these attributes okay uh, the id release uh, uh, title and the rating and then we have the person uh, which simply has a name this can be a director or actor and finally we have the genre here uh, which is simply a string and these are the three relationships we have uh, a movie 
in a genre that's the genre and a person directed movie a person acted in movie okay so that's our graph database and then uh, here we have collected uh, some examples now in real in real world the way it might uh, work is uh, for example let's say we build a system and the user uh, start using the system uh, they ask a question they get the result and if the result is correct they might give a thumbs up and we take that as a correct uh, answer and we take that example and we add that example to our examples uh, repository so this way uh, we can grow our uh, examples okay imagine we have a large organization where uh, the business uh, questioning uh, 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 sorry querying a sql database or a graph database uh, etc right so over the time we grow our uh, uh, sample examples and using dynamic uh, prompting uh, depending on what the user ask we select the most relevant examples and provide it to llm so that we get uh, much better results so our system performance uh, improves over time as we collect more and more examples okay all right so just uh, it's pretty much are somewhat similar to sql queries so here let's say we are asking a question how many artists are there so first we need to find out all the persons uh, but we also have directors right we are only looking for artist so the we know the person has a relationship with movie as acted in so we look for that relationship all the persons who has that acted in relationship and then we simply count the distinct okay so th that's what we are doing here match a person so let extract all the persons but they must have this acted in relationship with the movie so that will filter out all the directors so we have all the persons and then all we need to do is count uh, how many of them are that distinct and uh, returning that okay so that's how the neo4j syntax is all right and then first let's see how we do it uh, without dynamic uh, prompting okay so here we have a few shot prompt template and uh, this uh, example prompt template so this example uh, it's very simple we will have a question uh, uh, the user query and uh, the cipher query like uh, this one right so the question and the query uh, that's the schema of our examples and the prompt here from all the examples we have collected here we are selecting only the top five uh, examples so irrespective of what the user query is we are always selecting only the top five queries okay uh, for example to avoid all these issues so and then this is the template and uh, this part uh, it's the standard thing to say uh, to give a persona to llm that you are neo4j expert the user ask a question in natural language and you should generate uh, a cipher statement which should be syntactically correct so and so forth right and then here we have uh, the user question so our prompt uh, looks like this the user ask a question okay and so this is the persona to llm our system prompt here we have a few short examples so these five examples are never going to change because we have selected only the top five examples and finally here we have the user query and we are asking llm to generate a cipher query okay so that's the uh, uh, that's the standard method of doing we already discussed what are the uh, challenges uh, with this method so let's see how we can do this dynamic few shot example okay now it works as uh, similar to a rack uh, type of system uh, what we do is we take all our examples we take an embedding model we create the vectors store them in the vector database and then when a user ask a question we use the same embedding model we create uh, the vectors and we do the semantic similar search and we extract the top n documents uh, so all that is being done just in these few lines of code okay so we have neo4j vector database for storing the embeddings and we need an embedding model we are using this open ai embedding model and uh, here we have uh, 
uh, the query selector uh, using uh, the semantic uh, similar search okay it's called the semantic similar example selector all right so first we are providing all the examples and also an embedding model okay so this will create embeddings for all our uh, examples and store them in the neo4j vector database and we are saying whenever i query this semantic similar search engine uh, give me the top five most relevant examples for the question we have provided okay so let's run example selector here we have a question now in this ex example repository we have only eight uh, but imagine we have let's say thousands collected over time now Um, sorry, where we are? Yeah, here we are. So we ask a question, and the example selector it extract the most five semantically similar or relevant uh, questions uh, to the user question from that repository. Okay, which is what this dynamic uh, 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 few shot uh, prompting is. And finally, uh, let's put together. Uh, to create a chain so that uh, we can uh, query the database. So here we have the prompt, uh, which is this few short prompt example. Uh, but this time, instead of selecting the top five, we will be providing our example selector, which dynamically uh, query the vector database. Uh, so here is our example uh, selector, uh, the standard stuff and the question. So here, is our prompt this is how our prompt look like now if we change this question our prompt will also change or uh, dynamically uh, basically these examples will change now let's run uh, with one or two examples so here we have graph cipher QA chain question and answer chain now we need an LLM uh, right um, so the most a uh, common question I get is, uh, uh, can I use uh, open source LLMs? I don't have access to uh, OpenAI, right? Yes, we can do that. So let's do both. So here uh, we have chat OpenAI and Olama. Uh, so installing Olama is super simple. You can install Olama and they have pretty much all the open source model. You just need to download and run Olama and uh, Langchain. It automatically detect if you are running Olama uh, and a, it will use us, uh, that model. Okay. So here we are using code llama from meta and we are creating a chain. So we need to provide, uh, the schema, the graph or database schema and an LLM and our, uh, prompt. So this prompt include, uh, the question as well as the dynamically selected examples. Okay, verbose true. Uh, so we just want to see uh, the generated query. And finally, here we are invoking the chain. So how many actors are in the graph? That's our question. Uh, so entering the QA chain, and this is uh, uh, the generated query, right? So match a person acted in. Uh, now here, we do not have a movie uh, uh, on the right, right? The reason is because uh, Anybody who has the relationship acted in is an actor. So that's why uh, uh, we don't need to have a movie here. But it's a good practice to explicitly define our relationship between uh, the nodes. So it's returning uh, the distinct account of uh, P, which is the person. All right. So the answer is 967 and finish the chain. So the result it says, uh, the, so, the L, so from graph database, we get only 967. But the chain, it again synthesized this answer uh, into human readable form. Uh, so it says there are 967 distinct actors uh, in the graph. Okay. Now let's do the same uh, with OpenAI GPT uh, 3.5. Uh, so all we are doing is simply changing uh, the LLM model. And we got uh, exactly the same result. Okay. And... Uh, just a quick tip now our graph database might be large uh, with a lot of nodes and relationship 
but let's say we have particular users who are only interested uh, in uh, in subset of the graph database. So in such a case, uh, when creating the system uh, or the QA chain, instead of in providing the full graph database uh, with everything in it, we can exclude certain type of things. For example, let's say we have a users who are only interested in uh, the actors, the directors in the movie, they are not interested in genre, they are not going to ask any questions relevant to genre, okay? So we can exclude uh, uh, the type of notes uh, from the uh, QA chain system, okay? So that will speed up the process and also uh, reduce uh, the errors. Uh, that's all for this video. Thank you very much.